Hello everyone and welcome to our successful Big Born One webinar. My name is Jessica Bonsell and I'm the head of communications at Brightberries Info. Hi, I'm Ahira and I'm a part of Bright Bears Info's communications team as well. Today we have four amazing guests who will be answering any of your stress coping questions. Jessica, why don't you explain who we are and what we do? Sure. So for anyone who doesn't already know us, we are Bright Bears Info. Bright Bears Info is a student-led nonprofit organization. Our mission is to provide you high school students around the world with resources and opportunities that will help you explore careers and discover your passions. We know that being a student, especially during the pandemic, can be challenging and difficult to find opportunities. Hence, Brightbirds Info was created. We post opportunities for high school students to help learn and gain experience while discovering new things. So be sure to check out Bright Bears Info on Spotify, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, and Twitter, as well as YouTube, where we post the recordings of all our events. So we will first introduce our guests, Irene Karki, Lucy Papikova, Urjan Fandir, and Sophia Badashan, who will then go on to how to identify and deal with stress led by Lucy and Irene. And finally, Urjan and Sophia will take the lead and talk about their personal experiences and stress coping mechanisms. We ask that everyone stays on mute and keeps their cameras on into any of your questions in the chat. So our webinar will be split into three sections, identifying stress and how to deal with it, along with a demonstration of a series of stress coping exercises and stress coping mechanisms and personal experiences with stress, along with an additional Q&A portion at the end. To start off, we'll let our guest introduce themselves briefly. So Irene, can you start us off and tell us who you are and how stress plays a role in your life and how you deal with it on a daily basis? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Hida. Um, so my name is Irene Karki. I work as a mental health therapist in the GTA area. Um, stress and anxiety are such natural parts of our life, and it is something that I go through a lot as well especially working in the field that I work in. So some of the strategies that I have learned over the years, and I, I say that I've learned, but at the same time, I keep learning every day, um, is that I take breaks. So I make sure that uh, whenever I'm feeling extremely stressed, I'm taking my breaks on time. I'm really listening to my body. Over the years, I've learned how where stress sits in my body. And whenever I'm noticing that I'm get, feeling triggered, I make sure that I'm taking my breaks. And also some of the other things that I do is really connecting with the support system that I do have. Um, even therapists need therapists. So I make sure I connect with my therapist and my family and friends as well. So that's some of the things that I do. And I'd be very excited to hear more about how other individuals uh, deal with stress today. Uh, yes, hello everyone. My name is Lucy and I'm a certified therapist in kinesiology and educational kinesiology instructor. And I define myself as a stress therapist so people can understand what I do. So basically my job is to uh, make uh, the life of my clients easier and happier. Uh, for that, I use uh, various techniques that support stress relief so we can reach uh, our full potential. I also propose workshops and classes to increase participants' uh, self-power. On a personal note, I was born and raised in Czech Republic, and I've spent the last 20 years uh, living in Switzerland, uh, where I currently have my private practice in Zurich. Uh, so Lucy and Figures, uh, I have uh, three master's degrees uh, in two different countries. Uh, I've lived in seven different countries and um, visited uh, 45 plus countries because I love traveling. And I can speak seven different languages at different levels. So I never stop learning. And uh, stress release is very important for me so I can achieve all that. Um, so I use potential boost techniques on a daily basis. And today I will be sharing with you uh, some of these techniques uh, that come from educational kinesiology. So you can do the same. And uh, one fun fact about me, I did my university exchange um, at McGill University in Montreal and I spent the coolest winter, the coldest winter in my life uh, in Canada, and I absolutely loved it. Thank you.
Um, next up is Arjun Pender. Hi, my name is Arjun. Uh, I'm a, currently a second year computer science specialist at the University of Toronto. And um, yeah, I've had to deal with stress for pretty much most of my life uh, from uh, middle school, high school to university. And uh, I've learned a lot of uh, really great uh, tips and tricks that I'm uh, really excited to share with you guys. Um, I guess I can mention a few now. Uh, like it says on the screen, I recommend taking a couple of short breaks during uh, long study se sessions and uh, really focusing on those breaks. So not doing anything but taking that break. Uh, be it like leaving the room that you're studying in and going on a walk um, or uh, whatever that may be for you. Last but not least is Sophia Badakshan. Hello everyone. I hope that you're all safe and well. My name is Sophia Badakshan and I'm si studying science and business biotechnology at University of Waterloo. I'm in my, currently in my fourth year. Um, so recently stress has started to play a constructive role in my life and has switched from that um, little bit of a unmanageable um, sense that it had before because I've learned how to manage it. So when not managed and understood properly, stress can actually slow my days down and lead to procrastination. I deal with it through kind self-talk, reflection and recognition on a daily basis. And I hope I can share my experience with you guys today. Um, now I will pass it on to Ahita. Thank you. Now let's move on to how to identify stress and deal with stress with Irene and Lucy. Also make sure to have a cup of, wa cup of plain water with you and make sure to have some quiet space. But before we get started, there is a poll that you can answer. How the poll question is, how do you know when you are stressed? Okay, it looks like most of you said feeling overwhelmed, unmotivated, or unfocused. Well, let's hope that Lucy and Irene can help figure that out. Perfect, thank you. So um, thank you so much for participating in the polls. That gives us an idea for um, how you personally experience stress. So let's walk through um, I want to invite you all to try out this exercise where we will all experience, we'll all feel stress in our body. And this is in order to get an understanding for how it sits in, on our body for us. And for everybody, it's going to look very different. So there were a lot of responses. There was a lot of feeling unmotivated, uh, behavioral changes, um, maybe stomach ache, headaches. So there are a lot of ways that stress and anxiety can manifest in our body. So today I wanna to invite you all to participate in this if, if it feels safe for you. Um, so let's try this together. Um, let's all get, get uh, ourselves in a comfortable position and let's close our eyes if that feels safe for you. If it doesn't feel safe for you to close your eyes, then you can find a spot in front of you, a place uh, that you can look at and focus on my instructions. So I'm gonna keep my eyes closed because that feels okay for me. And now I want you to think back to the last time that you were, when you were feeling stressed. But before that, I wanna invite for you to think of a stressful situation that's not very stressful. So for example, on a stress level of zero to 10, zero being 
not as stressed, not stressed at all, and 10 being extremely stressed, maybe find something that's on a scale of four or five. So something that's gonna be manageable for us for today. So let's close our eyes and think back to a stressful situation in our life. I'll give you a couple of seconds to find that situation. I want you to really take yourself back there. Maybe it was an assignment you were working on, a test you were studying for, maybe an argument you got into with a family member, friend, partner. Maybe it's related to school, maybe family. I want you to bring yourself, try to think back to that situation. Now I want you to really try to see if you can feel the stress and that emotional discomfort in your body. As you're thinking about this stressful situation, I want you to do a quick scan of your body. Let's start from the top of your head. When you're in this situation, is your head hurting? Do you notice your eyes are they straining or is it hurting? Do you notice your jaws clenching? Is there stiffness in there somewhere? What about your neck? Just notice how stiff your neck feels. Your shoulders. I want you to move a little lower. Notice your abdomen, your stomach area. Do you feel tightness? Do you feel something in there? Let's move a little bit lower. And your legs. Do you feel it somewhere in your legs, the tightness, the stiffness? Your arms, maybe you feel some tingling. Maybe you feel shaky. Your arms feel cold, maybe too hot. I want you to move down to your knees and then to your feet and just notice any tightness in different parts of your body. As you're thinking of the situation, think of how uncomfortable it feels in your body. I want you to sit with it for a few seconds and just notice it. You don't need to do anything to change it. Also notice your breathing. How's your breathing? Is it really deep, shallow? You're not breathing well. Did you just notice that you're not breathing too well? There's no need to change anything. Just notice it. Now Lucy is going to walk us through a few exercises to see if we feel any different. Thank you, Irene. So I propose you to stay with this feeling that you have. Um, lots of people reply that they feel overwhelmed. Um, so I imagine that there is this big mountain that you have in front of you and suddenly everything is complicated. There is a lot of energy, you feel unclear, uh, there is not enough energy. So I propose you to uh, stand up because it will be very important to remove yourself from the situation. So let's feel our body, okay? So just stand up, stay with this feeling, eyes open or eyes closed, how you feel comfortable and just notice, okay? Where you have these tensions or maybe pain, and um, stand on one leg so you can feel if you have your balance, okay? With the eyes closed, it's much uh, more difficult. So if you close your eyes, just notice if your body is balanced or if you move to which side, if you need to do some extra effort. You can choose your leg, left one or right one, and just notice, observe 
How does it feel? Okay. Then just observe if you do the movement from left to right, how does it feel in your body? Is it easier to move on one side or to the other side? How is the amplitude? How, how is your body? Does it feel tense? How are your hands, your jaws, your shoulders, your knees? Are they locked or are they relaxed? Okay, when you have noticed all this, move forward and backward. And again, does it feel comfortable? Do you feel safe? Or is it maybe you feel some fear or anxiety or something that is related? You see, I crawl, so there is already something in my body. And then we will do the movement from down and up and down and up. And again, you observe. Do you feel comfortable going up or going down? How is your breathing? Do you breathe in your belly? Or did you stop breathing? Just notice. And when you have all these observations, just remember them and we will compare with the activity that we will be do after the exercise. Okay, so these were our pre-activities. Okay, so just the noticing. And now, hopefully you have a glass of water with you. So plain water, ideally, still plain water with no addic uh, addic addiction, <laughs> no addictive. And so I will ask you to take the water in your mouth, keep it a bit in your mouth, so we can hydrate directly the body and then little sip by little sip, you will drink it. Lots of people observe that they don't drink enough water when they study, when they are too focused, too um, concentrated on something very important, they stop drinking. So the hydration of the body is very important. So once you put the mouth, the, the water in your mouth, you hydrate directly the brain and suddenly the body receives the energy. Okay, so this is the first part. The second part, we will massage under the collarbones. So just locate your collarbones and then you do like a little C. So with your thumb and two fingers together, you will massage like these two little valleys that you have under the collarbones and the second hand goes on the belly button. So just stand, relax, your knees are relaxed, your shoulders are relaxed, your jaw are relaxed and gently massage and breathe in the, in the belly if you can. So when you inhale, your belly goes out and when you exhale, your, body, your belly goes in. And you can exchange the hand again with the other hand, two fingers together and the thumb, the other hand on the belly button. And this is basically to connect the two hemispheres that we have to connect the brain, to give it that it's like turning the, the, the key in your car or switching on something, switching on the brain. Okay, this is the second part. The third part of the exercise is we will do the cross core movement. So left hand, right knee, right hand, left knee, and very slowly we will do the cross core movement. This will activate our brain and connect both hemispheres, left with right. And this also helps us make the energy circulate in our body, okay? And the last part, we will cross our legs at the, at the ankles level and we will cross our hands. So like this, like this, like this, and on the, on the chest. If that doesn't feel comf uh, comfortable for you, you can just put your hands in your armpits like this, okay? This will create 
like a lazy aid with our bodies so we can keep our energy for ourselves and this will help our grounding. So when you inhale, put the, your tongue on the roof of your, of your mouth. And when you exhale, you release the tongue. And we do this three times, three breaths, okay? So. And at the end, we uncross everything and we just put our fingers together like this. This is an um, exercise that is called PACE and it comes from educational kinesiology. And this uh, should help us to focus more, to be able to have more energy in our bodies, to be able to learn, to remember, and to focus on what we need to do. So what lots of people mention is there is lack of movement. So this, for example, this will activate the body. There is the water and then the, the, the focus. So we can really ground ourselves and be with our energy. So this is the first part. Then, of course, you are all the time in front of your computers or in front of your books. So I would like to ask you to um, use and release your eyes. So we have quite, quite a lot of stress that is um, located in our eyes. So imagine that your body is divided in two parts, okay? The left one and the right one. And so you use your fingers to guide your eyes in front of you. So you come from your uh, nose, you start at your nose, and then uh, you do a lazy eight in front of your eyes going up. So you can start on the left or the right, doesn't matter. But basically without moving your hand, your head, you move your eyes. So your eyes follow your fingers. And again, release your shoulders. Make sure that you're relaxed, your jaws are relaxed. And either you can do it really in front of you, in front of your eyes, or if you look at your computer or at your books a bit down, then you can do the movement, like if you are simulating the movement of your eyes when you look at your books. So you can do it also a bit lo um, lower. Hopefully you can see my eyes well. And this is really an exercise to release the tension that we might have in our eyes. So we can but to use them afterwards. It's important to also provide the break for our eyes. Okay. My next exercise, it's called the thinking cap. So I will ask you to massage your ears. So you massage your ear on the outside, on the inside, I will remove my earring. Also the lobes here, you also in the inside. And you guys might know the reflexology point on the face, on the hands, on the foot and on the ears. They are basically all the points that are connected to our internal organs. So when we massage our ears, it's like doing a mini massage of the whole body. So when we feel really tense, you know, we cannot work anymore everything is kind of like stuck. We massage our ears. We may also turn a bit with the, with the body. With your eyes, you can go in different directions also. So you can really relax. Um, Lucy, and when you start yawning like me, this is the best, means that the exercise came through. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, we have a question in the chat. And yes. it's, uh, they're asking, what is a lazy eight? Ah, lazy eight, it's like an eight that is uh, laying down. Lazy eight, I will. This is a lazy eight. Okay. So it's like a figure eight laying down. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. 
Okay. So we've massaged the ears. If there is any other question, just please ask me so it's clear for everyone. Okay, so we did the four exercises, the high yeah. cup. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, perfect. So now let's do the same movements as before. So you can observe if you feel a difference in your body. Okay. So again, locate the stress in your body, like Irene asked you to do earlier. Just stand up. If you feel comfortable, close your eyes and locate the same um, place where you felt the stress before. Does it feel same or different? And if it's different, how different? And then try to stand on one leg again. And again, does it feel same as before or does it feel different? Is it maybe easier? Do you have more balance now? Do you feel safer or more focused? Just observe. We can also move from left to right. And again, maybe you can move now. The movement is maybe longer for me. I can go really further away. I can really feel it. And I feel more relaxed in my body. Even the amplitude is very fluid and then forward and backward forward and backward i can feel that before i was much stiffer i couldn't hold my my body now it's it's really going much smoother and then down and up down and up Um, is there anybody who would like to comment on how does it feel? Um, we have we have something in the chat and people are saying that it feels a lot easier now. Okay, wonderful. Great noticing. It's really important to connect to the body because the body speaks to you. The body is your best friend. And when you are able to hear what your body says, then you are able to, to reply, to react to it, right? Is there any other um, reaction? Um, a lot of people are using the reaction emojis to show how it feels. Okay. Can you give me an example? Um, Stephanie is putting up the thumbs up emoji. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Okay, I have two more minutes. So I would like to also share uh, one thing with you. Um, what we are all looking for when we are stressed, of course, is to calm down, relax and be full of energy, right? So what we need is actually the, um, the happiness hormone to, to, to circulate in our body so we can feel happier again, right? Because we don't want to feel tense and stressed and uh, we can't sleep anymore, we cannot concentrate. So I would like to propose you to write three things that make you feel empowered, three things that make you vibrate. That makes you happy. Oh, sorry to interrupt, Lucy, but um, in the comments, we have some people saying that they still feel pain in the stomach and knees. What should they do about that? Exactly. And this is, this is exactly what I'm proposing this, because obviously we cannot, you know, release the whole stress in five minutes. And this is something that they can do at home, you know, following the webinar, because, uh, of course, you know, um, it's better to do a regular stress release exercises in order to, to achieve the whole relaxation or to do like a whole session, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes at the beginning. And it's really great to do it every day. Or when you feel stressed, then 
drink, move, etc. And this is why I'm proposing you to write these three things that make you feel empowered. So in my last workshop that I did, people were writing that what make them feel happy is dancing or singing or laughing, being with friends. So um, then ask yourself if you do these things when you're stressed. Because when you're stressed and you need to relax, do you do the things that make you happy? And if don't, maybe a good question would be, why do you don't do that? Or maybe just start. So you can boost this happiness hormone and you can really full, fill your energy with, uh, will fill your body with energy again. Thank you so much, Lucina, for showing us how to identify and deal with stress with so many of your great exercises. Now we're going to be moving on to Urjan and Sophia, who will be sharing their personal experiences as well as some different coping mechanisms. But before we begin, we have a poll question. The poll question is, what type of stress do you experience related to school? And if your answer is not a poll option, please message your answer to Brightford's info through the chat. So according to the results, many of you guys are having, are you stressing out over assignments and homework? So hopefully Arjun and Sophia can help you out with that. So now Arjun and Sophia are going to take a lead and talk about some of their personal experiences. Go ahead, Arjun. <laughs> um, I guess I can start off. Um, so uh, ever since like, high school, when I decided that I wanted to get into computer science, um, I had to deal with stress from like, like, like a lot more stress from that moment on because computer science is like a very competitive field. Um, and it definitely didn't help that I didn't really deal with this kind of stress beforehand. And uh, it paid it bit me in my butt when I got to university. Um, something that I really want to emphasize is that, um, especially with tests or uh, assignments and homework, or anything like that, is you get a head start and you remember like back to the last time you felt stressed um, to uh, start ahead of time and uh, start your assignments early, it'll like, like it's, it'll make a, uh, a lot of these tests and assignments a lot more manageable. But um, something that is really important is um, getting a good amount of sleep um, uh, while you're getting, uh, while you're in this whole mess of like assignments, both in high school and at university, it can be really tempting to just stay up a little bit longer, uh, maybe by like just half an hour or just an hour to try and squeeze out this la last thing for this assignment. But um, a lot of the time, it's just not worth it. Um, uh, you should be trying to sleep as early, like, like earlier into the day um, as opposed to later. So sleeping at uh, around 10 p.m., 9 p.m., I'd say is a good time versus sleeping at like 2 a.m. Um, and avoiding technology uh, when you go to sleep is also really important um, because if you're looking at a screen, it can really, uh, it sort of tricks your brain into thinking that you're supposed to still stay awake. Um, and that's really bad for sleep, sleep quality. And um, the other thing is like, you should try and have a sleep routine of some kind. Uh, for example, um, it can be something super simple, like making sure you always change into a new pair of pajamas before you go to sleep um, or something like that. 
uh, a lot of the symptoms of stress that um, I've been getting, um, and uh, I'm sure a lot of you have at the same time, can be just remedied by getting good sleep at the same time. Absolutely. Um, so to go off of what Arjun was saying, um, from my experience in order to deal with assignments and homework in high school, I just did them as they came. But once you enter university, and I wish I knew this in high school, it helps to just break it down, set smaller, significant, and smart goals for yourself that are time-bound, uh, they're attainable and relevant and specific. You want to be as specific as you can. And secondly, um, moving on from the assignments and homework section, I wanted to mention that really be mindful of your diet and don't uh, do things just because they're a norm. An example of the thing that I was mentioning is drinking coffee. So what a lot of university students and high school students are starting to do is drinking a lot of coffee, staying up late and doing that because everyone else is doing it, right? Um, so you want to get a high intake of water, high intake of fruits and vegetables. And um, in the long run, that is super important. And secondly, I wanted to mention um, that you should study efficiently. Studying doesn't mean qual uh, quantity, it means quality. And once you do that, you find yourself being less stressed. Sometimes when we are stressed, we sit at our desk and we're like, okay, I'm gonna stay up until 12 a.m., do this assignment, right? But you don't want to be in that place. You want to study efficiently and thus you'll be happier You'd have time to do your leisure activities and have an overall more balanced life. So Arjun, do you want to give them the tip about the calendar? Sure, and I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it up on my phone right now. Um, I strongly suggest everyone, uh, regardless of where you're applying to, like this is just a tip for right now and when you get into university, but make a calendar for all of the stuff that you um, have when you, first are assigned it. So if you have an English essay due two months from now, put it on your calendar. This is hard to see. The sun's going right into it. Give me a second. Uh, uh, like every, like my entire semester is already planned out. Yeah, you can see all the assignments, every single lecture I have. Um, you should like using a calendar, if it's on your phone or if it's a physical one, is super important and will help you uh, manage your courses a lot better. Um, it also gives you um, like, it also lets you schedule like like um, de-stressing time um, as well. I have that on my phone as well. Like every day I have like about 30 minutes or so that I just spend relaxing, um, assuming I can afford to, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, it really helped me a lot. This is something that like your parents always tell you like, oh, you should have an agenda or you should like write that down in your calendar. And um, I'm sure this is the case for a lot of you guys, but you, um, but like me at the time, you might have just like been like, yeah, whatever you say, mom, and you just didn't listen. Um, turns out it's a pretty good idea. <laughs> it's, it's actually a really good idea, actually. And um, I strongly suggest that you guys start doing it now if you guys haven't already. Absolutely. Um, I myself use a calendar and I find that um, sometimes if you're more of a writer, um, you can have a physical calendar and checking things off would be one of the most satisfying things <laughs> once you're in university. So the second thing we wanted to share with you guys is the Pomodoro technique. So the Pomodoro technique um, has been proven to increase efficiency while performing different tasks. And what it does it breaks down your uh, time. I think it's a total of two hours or so into 25 minute uh, sprints of work, which is a Pomodoro. And then um, it gives you five minute break time. So how that will go is that you will have 25 minutes of work, then you're done. You get five minute break, 25 minutes of work, and then five minute break, and then you do that four times, so four um, cycles of work, and then you get a long break of 15 minutes. And this is very helpful for those who sometimes will spend um, 
their break time and their work time and their work time and their break time. So it lets you really differentiate between those. And one of the most important things is taking real breaks, which Arjun will explain now. Yeah, um, so when you're taking a break, you might be tempted to just like alt tab to another screen and like maybe, or like uh, just pull out your phone and uh, just like go on Twitter or Instagram or whatever uh, social media site you want, or maybe just play a game um, while you still sit in the same room surrounded by all of your books and work. Um, this isn't the best way to take a break and it definitely um, doesn't help relieve stress as much as it could. Um, I'd suggest instead leaving the place that you're working and leaving all of your books and studying material behind and either moving to another room to do that same thing you're gonna do before, even if it is just like browsing uh, social media or even better leaving like, and like going for a walk or like, like, uh, like, like um, I think we were talking about, um, me and Sof uh, Sophia was discussing this and we were thinking like, um, like uh, nature watching even. If, you're, uh, if you live near any parks or have a really good view out your window. Um, yeah, it's just a really good idea. All right, and the last thing I wanted to touch upon um, is really being focused and being present. If you guys are not getting enough sleep, if you're not, if you're stressed, um, then you will be spending that time that you're in lecture when you're doing your work not being focused and not being present. And what that does, is stretches the time that you will be spending on those tasks. So by mindfulness meditation, by the exercises that Irene and Lucy shared, by doing those things and really setting up yourself for a healthier lifestyle, you'll get to be focused and be present. And that will significantly reduce your studying time and um, improve your quality of work even. One of the biggest challenges that your generation, mine, and everyone right now um, is facing right now is the level of attentiveness they have and the amount of information that is thrown at them. So control the information that is coming to you, be focused and be present. And hopefully that helps you guys. Thank you so much, Sophie and Arjun, for some great tips. Now we'll be moving on to Q&A. So drop your questions for Sophie and Arjun in the chat. The first question we have is, as a student, I have a heavy school life, um, extracurricular and a volunteer workload. My schedule is full, uh, super full and packed. How do I manage stress, the packed workload, and how do I manage my time? Um, so uh, I would recommend, um, uh, so this is actually something that I had to deal with when I was in high school as well, because I had a part-time job and I was going for, through university applications and um, a billion tests that all landed on the same week, because of course it does. Um, I generally uh, try to come up with like ideas for like commutes or like during like like if I'm uh, either I'm driving or being driven to work or um, in between extracurriculars, I spend that time to either de-stress or uh, cope with stuff. Um, uh, listening to music is a big thing for me. Um, if you just like uh, I just love listening to music and that's what I ended up using um, as a de-stressing mechanism. Um, and it works out really well because you can do it kind of whenever you want. And if you're, uh, so it, it like works perfectly for like commuting and stuff. Um, the only thing that I have to add to that is if you're volunteering, if you're doing school, if you have, I don't, I don't know if you mentioned having a job, uh, but if you have that and you're also applying for university, take a moment and see if those align with your long-term goals and they make you happy. You don't want to be doing things just for the sake of doing them. Um, and if that adds more stress, then I think that um, is not good for you in the long run. And if things are making you happier, then overall, you'll be able to perform better. Really choose your battles at this stage of your life. Um, even in university, you will find I think I have one minute, so I'll try to be quick. You'll find that sometimes the university like mandate is entrepreneurship, right? 
And not everyone is an entrepreneur. Do you have to become an entrepreneur? Are you going to start your business just because everyone else is? Um, always take a look and see where your goals are, are and if your activities are aligning with them, okay? <laughs> yeah, thank you for that, Sophia. That was very enlightening. Um, we have one more question and it says that, has stress ever been beneficial for you? You wanna take this one? I know you have something to say. Yes, so we were actually talking about this earlier today. Um, and then weird enough, I ended up getting a really good grade in a difficult course when I passed the first midterm but at 50%. So um, I ended up with the mark of 82 in organic chemistry. I think it was 80 or 82. And how that went is that the professors set the midterm so that if you didn't do well on the first one, the weight would get transferred to the second one. And if you didn't do well on the second one, the weight would get transferred to the exam, which would be 100%. So the idea was here that keep on going and trust the process and don't give up. So one of the things I wanted to uh, let you guys know, stress can drive you to do things, can drive you to keep on going sometimes. But you want to be aware of that tipping point when the stress is too much that you don't want to engage with that activity or studying or you don't have motivation. Um, there is a huge balance. And I think that in that specific moment, it was very beneficial because it kept me going until the exam and I did well in the course. And uh, to add on to that, I have a really good story and I'll try and make this quick um, of something that happened to me in my first year of university that ended up uh, teaching me a really valuable lesson. Um, I'll so at the University of Toronto, we have a system called uh, POST. And basically, when you get into university with the University of Toronto, you're not officially in your program, and you apply again first year. And the computer science post is really, really, really hard to get into. Um, I, I mean, not to toot my own horn, but um, it's a huge like, like, like cause of stress for uh, first year students at the university. Um, and I was one of those kids, and um, the stress got to me, and it, it ended up like, I ended up having to drop my main calculus course that I needed to like, uh, to like, like you know, graduate, um, and I'd take it over the summer instead because um, the stress really got to me. I got like a, and I'm not joking when I say this, a 39, I think, on one of the term tests. It was really bad for me. Um, but thanks to that, I was able to learn that in university, um, if you need to drop a course or just uh, or like get an extension on something for whatever reason, you can do that. Like there's nothing, there's no harm in just like um, retaking the course later if you're allowed to do it with the university. There's nothing wrong with that. Failure is like a part of life. And if like the stress is too much, it's perfectly fine to like um, look for other options for what you're doing right now. Um, thankfully, when I, uh, thankfully because, and I feel like because I dropped that course, I was able to make post um, and focus my time on my other courses. And uh, now I'm here. So, you know, it all worked out in the end. Thank you, Urshan and Sophia. Um, so our last question of the webinar is directed towards Lucy and Irene. Um, and it's about how do you know when you should reach out to someone about your mental health? That's a great question. And if you're asking that question, so it, there are, it's not that you, it, there's a lot of stigma around getting mental health um, support. Um, so I just wanna put it out there that even if you are feeling that stress building up and you're not at a level where you feel like um, it's unmanageable, but you know you're getting there, it's okay to get support during that time. Um, it's going to be more of a preventative approach than going in when things are looking very unmanageable. Um, that being said, you can always reach out to mental health uh, therapists, uh, counselors, 
uh, to get that quick 15 to 30 minute consultations with our, which are free of charge to get an idea for if there is, if they think you need the support at the time. Um, some of the other ways to tell if you need support is if you feel like your stress is impacting different areas, aspects of your life. So for example, is it affecting how you, how, how often you're socializing, um, your time with your family, time for yourself, um, you're eating, you're sleeping. Um, is it showing up in your body? Just like how we sat down today, today to understand how it shows up in your body. Are you feeling those aches and pains in your body more often than not? Um, so these are all great indicators. So just like Lucy said before, your body is your best friend. It's, a, it's, it's so resourceful and it tends to tell you um, when it's time to take a break. And sometimes we live in a society which tells us to constantly work and overwork. That's what's um, marketed. So it's hard to convince ourselves that we deserve to take a break. So sometimes it's nice to have the support in place um, to remind us. Um, Lucy, do you have anything else to add to that? Yeah, I would like to add uh, just uh, one, one or two things. Um, I remember when I was studying, I was always feeling guilty that I was not doing enough. And it was always, always like a pressure on me. And, and I remember I was not very kind to myself and I was even like punishing myself or sabotaging myself. So uh, it was never enough to study. And when I didn't study enough by the end of the day, I was like, oh, I don't deserve a break. I don't deserve this. And I was really harsh on myself. And I, 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 would, I would say to my younger self, like, be nice to yourself, you know, and just everything you did today is the best you could do. And it's sufficient. It's enough. So like, be kind to yourself, take a break. And as I said before, you know, um, I, I was always working, 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 you know, studying, working to universities at the same time, etc and always pushing myself because it was work first and then fun. And then one friend told me, oh, but you know, I enjoy my day. I do whatever I want. I go outside, I, I eat well, and I meet my friends. And then only I work when I'm full of energy and, and I'm in that, in that right uh, space. And I was like, wow, that's so interesting. I was just, you know, like punishing myself for not working hard enough. And it was, I, I tried it then and I realized that I was actually feeling much more full of energy and I was much more productive when I was doing the break first and then I was working only. And it changed completely my whole perspective on learning. So just wanted to share this story. Thank you, Irene and Lucy. I couldn't agree anymore. Um, well, that's all the time we have today, and this is the end of Stress Coping 101. Thank you to everyone who came today, and we hope that you learned a lot from our amazing guests. We want to thank our panelists, Irene, Lucy, Urgent, and Sophia for joining us. Remember that if you have attended this webinar today, then you will automatically be entered in a draw to win an Amazon gift card. Next month, we will be having a giveaway where you'll be entered to, enter to win a $25 gift card. Do make sure to join our giveaway. We will be sending out emails shortly which will have the name of the winner. If the person does not reply within 48 hours, we will then pick out a new winner. If you have any more questions, make sure to stay back at the end for an optional Q&A session. You can connect with us on Instagram or on any of our other socials if you are looking for more opportunities such as today. Check out our Instagram page, which is where we will be posting weekly opportunities and updates. We also have future events planned, which will be happening during the course of the year. Our next monthly webinar will be happening on March 27th, and it is about financial literacy. Registrations will open soon, so keep a lookout. Our executive applications are currently open. If you would like to be a part of Bright Bears Info's social media team, then make sure to apply to be an executive member with the link in our Instagram bio. We will also be posting a recording of these webinars, so you can check out the webinars if you missed any on our YouTube page. And don't forget to subscribe. So that's the end of our Stress Coping 101 webinar, part two of our monthly webinar series. And I want to thank all of you guys for attending our second webinar. Again, if you have any more questions, then make sure to stay behind, stay tuned, and we hope to see you all soon. Bye, everyone.